All right, uh, I'm going to run through a um, on-campaign event round here. Uh, I did the in garrison event round in my last video, and uh, this is another one from the third campaign season, which is the end of the War of the First Coalition, um, which you can see here. War of the First Coalition ends, so this is up to 1797. At this point, so the event that we're going to be doing will be 3B, the Guides at Arcola Battle of Rivoli, um, and basically this entire campaign season, the big focus is on the Army of Italy, uh, which conveniently is where all of the Grognards currently are. Um, with the blue one, he had been in the Army of the Reserve uh, in the during the Garrison phase, and he drew the event card for that Garrison, which allows him allowed him to transfer uh, to the Army of Italy. And then I had another of the Grognards, I think he was in the Army of the North, um, and he requested a transfer and got it uh, into the Army of Italy. So they were all in the Army of Italy. And the, uh, the first uh, on-campaign event um, for this campaign season was the bridge at Lodi, uh, the Battle of Castiglione. And essentially that was like two events in one card. And it looks like this one will be the same with Guides at Arcola, Battle of Rivoli. Uh, and what that means, what that meant was, is that they got a uh, a bunch of glory and experience and money and everything for the Bridget Lodi, Lodi part, uh, but no battle cards. But then there was the battle where they got to do the battle cards. So it was kind of like, uh, it was a huge jump in terms of, I think the, the, the Bridget Lodi got each of them nine glory, um, in addition to those who had additional standing, um, like Green here, he was at a plus three at the time, his standing's increased since then. Um, so a lot of these guys got a lot of glory, uh, a lot of experience, a lot of Napoleon's notice, um, just off of the last campaign event card. So um, if there's more cards that are big jumps like that, then maybe this game won't uh, creep along as slowly as I thought it was going to. Um, the way these guys were just getting, you know, one and two and three point uh, bumps in each of their uh, main promotion related uh, categories, which are essentially Napoleon's notice, glory, and experience. Um, one of them did get taken prisoner. Red got uh, in the, on his battle card. He got uh, outflanked or something like that, and, and ended up getting taken prisoner. So he lost all his money, which was quite a lot. Most of these guys, um, some of these guys have a hundred francs now on their in their purse. Um, so they're hoping to make it through this campaign and uh, to the next campaign season, where they can then transfer a lot of that money to Paris and uh, protect it from being plundered. Um, because uh, Red here had a lot of money on his person, and when you get taken prisoner, you lose all of it. So um, that's, that's kind of a big setback for him. Um, and he won't be taking part. He'll be drawing cards, but not taking part in any of them for this last campaign event, uh, because the prisoner exchange doesn't happen until the end of the campaign season. Um, and then he'll come back and be able to rejoin his uh, army um, for the next campaign season. So, so he'll draw cards, but not play them. Um... I think we had one promotion, I think, or two promotions, actually. Uh, Blue um, made it to lieutenant, from sous-lieutenant to lieutenant, um, and he used, he had a lot of Napoleon's notice. He managed to rack up. He's got 19 right now, um, and you can trade that um, if you're a little bit short on glory or experience. I think you can use it for both. Um, it's either... I think Napoleon's Notice you can use for experience, or maybe it's, you can substitute that for glory, and then you can substitute experience for, um, here, whenever Grognard is to receive Napoleon's Notice, oh, that's the modification by the standing. Um, and once again, I don't remember where any of this stuff is maybe under promotions. Yeah, here it is. A Grognard may count part or all of his Napoleon's notice in lieu of part or all of the glory requirement. However, any Napoleon's notice used to substitute for glory cannot also be counted toward the Napoleon's notice requirement. So, um, so you can use Napoleon's notice for glory, and then I think you can count glory in part in place of experience. So, if you're short on experience and have extra glory, you can use the glory to make up the difference to achieve the required numbers for promotion. 
Same for if you're short on glory, you can use Napoleon's Notice, but they don't go the other way. You can't use experience for, um, in fact, I think the experience is, yeah, to, for experience, you have to use two glory for one experience. Um, and then again, it actually then counts, removes any glory that you might be using um, towards promotion. So you have to have extra glory or extra Napoleon's notice uh, in order to achieve promotion. They can't count for both at the same time. So, And they don't go the other way. You can't use experience in place of glory. You can't use glory in place of Napoleon's notice. So it looks like it only goes down in that regard. So anyway, uh, I already did the income portion of the on-campaign round. Um, there is no support to worry about. The deck is built, um, so we start drawing cards. And our senior grognard is still blue, so purple goes first. His first card is parlay with the enemy. And he is still... these guys are all still line officers. They will be in it for a couple of more promotions, I don't think. Your field officer until you get to the chef de bataillon. All right, uh, so he gets experience plus one. And green, partisan ambush. Ouch, he's, in, he's most likely going to get wounded, so let's see how this turns out. Yeah, he's wounded. Oops. Dropping dice everywhere. And counters on the floor. Alright, um, so we look at when somebody gets wounded, you've got the wound table here, which uh, shows the, the degree to which they're wounded. He rolls a 70, which means he's not wounded too bad. Looks like just a flesh wound, so he gets a little extra glory, a little extra experience, but it is a little health wounded. However, he may still be taken prisoner, so... And he is. There was a 38, there was a P60, so he's taken prisoner and gets experience plus three. Now this is not good for him because he had over a hundred gold on his person. So, experience, one, two, three. And then in terms of his wound, looks like he will get some extra glory and one more experience from his wound. He gets two glory plus four for his standing because that's, well, I guess it's not from a combat card, it's from a campaign card, so he just gets the two glory. But, as you can see here, he had 124 francs on his person, all gone. So that was a significant blow, because he only has 32 bucks in Paris. So. That would have, he would have been able to start courting a lady with that kind of cash. Um, but all gone. It will mark him like red with a purple dye to signify he's in prison. Purple draws. He doesn't get to take part because he's in prison, so this card goes to waste. Looks like another one with a good chance of somebody being wounded. Oh, I forgot to do the health reduction. Uh, minus 1d10 divided by 3. So... He just loses one health, but that's enough to bump him down to 70. Uh, we finished red, we move on to blue, repulsed by the enemy, ouch, these guys are getting a lot of bad wound cards here, so I need to roll higher than an 80, which is unlikely, nope, he's wounded, for his wound, he is gravely wounded, in fact, he's killed. Grognard, I rolled a 08 there. So he's dead. Absent CB, death under misfortune, death under absences, and returning to play. 
haven't had to deal with this yet. So, Krognard, who dies, is not altogether out of play. Rather, he's resurrected as a new character, albeit with reduced qualities from what he possessed before dying. Seems a killed result on the wound table, which is what happened here. Uh, Grognard becomes absent, returns to normal, plays a live Grognard at the start of the next campaign season segment, returns to normal with the following adjustments. His Napoleon's notice, glory, experience, money, charm, and fencing are each reduced to 75% rounded up. E.g. glory 61 becomes 46. Identify the highest rank the Grognard can have in accordance with his newly reduced Napoleon's notice, glory, and experience. He returns to play at that new rank, so he'll probably come back as a Sioux Lieutenant. Uh, the average of all other living Grognards in play his assignment is determined for the current campaign round, as per usual. Uh, he did not have a Legion of Honor. In this case, it's Arms of Honor, I think, is what it calls. It was called before game turn six, or campaign season six. Loses office and titles, none of that. Loses wife and mistress, he doesn't have any of those. So it looks like he's just going to come back as at 75% at of what his stats are currently at. So uh, we'll just mark him... With what I have handy here, a blue die, that means he's dead. Wow, so we're only going to have one guy taking part <laughs> in the rest of this campaign season. So, he's done. We move to purple. Purple gets reconnaissance. Uh, he leads the scouts, gets experience plus two. So he's up to 31. He's not yet close to getting up to lieutenant. He did get promoted to Sioux Lieutenant. I don't think I pointed that out. He was the other promotion that we've had. Actually, everybody's up at Sioux Lieutenant now. I don't even remember when that happened. Anyway, uh, so we go to Green. He's in prison, so... Um, card won't take effect for him, so he misses out on the E plus 4, H minus 2. Red's in prison. Um, basically, what'll happen is most of these cards are going to get ignored. Although, well, I don't think Death... Let's look at absences for death. Does he draw? Most of the prisoners all draw cards, but he does not participate in play in any manner except to be dealt and exposed cards for each round. He cannot be the senior Grogdard while dead. He remains dead and absent and is out of normal play until the start of the next campaign season. Um, only takes part of the in-garrison rounds and on-campaign rounds with drawing cards, but does not participate in this. So it looks like they both do the same thing. They draw cards and show them, but they don't get to act on them. So what'll happen here is, with, with two in prison and one dead, but they're all in the Army of Italy, when I draw the event for this, only purple will get to take part, even if he doesn't draw. I think, uh, I think the event card will affect everyone, but we'll see. Um, and I don't remember who I just drew for. Green... No. Purple was the reconnaissance card, so that would be green, that would be red, this would be blue, and another forced march, he doesn't take part, back to purple on the march, he's experienced plus three, health men, lots of forced marching here, welcome to the Napoleonic era, it's three experience, two, three, Health minus one. His health isn't too good. He's down to 50. I guess he got wounded at some point, too. Um, all right, green. Sack the town. This is an interesting one, because here you could get a lot of money. Oh, and there's We Were There. So you personally tax the forces of the reaction to support the servants of the revolution. We Were There, which means everybody who's in his army or in his command um, gets to do this. So... Drawing Grognard divides money among Grognards who are there and himself if he wishes. Um, so, I guess the drawing Gr Grognard rolls and he can share if he wishes to do so, but what happens if the drawing Grognard's in prison? Does he still roll and say, I don't want to share? I'm going to play this that logically. The drawing Grognard gets to roll, um, but the only Grognard who's actually present gets all of the money. That's the way I'm going to look at it. 
So 1d10 times 3. So, oh, 1. Great. So, not exactly the windfall uh, we were hoping for. So he gets 3 gold. Alright. Back to red. Alright, here is the event card. Ride with guides at Arcola. We were there for Grognard's assigned to the Army of Italy. Treat as battle, no combat card. Check for arms of honor. So the only one doing this will be purple, since everyone's else either in prison or dead. So wound 15. He's fine. Rolled an 80. Prisoner 40. Ooh, that die is cocked. He's fine, 44, just barely. Um, so his Napoleon's notice goes up by five. This is treat as a battle, but no combat cards. So I don't think you get the bonus there because the bonus only comes from combat cards. So Napoleon's notice up by five. So he's at 13 for that. Glory up by eight. 39, so he's up to 47 glory. Experience plus 3. So his experience not quite up there yet. He's close enough where he could use Napoleon's notice to, to uh, get his glory high enough for promotion, but his experience is not quite high enough yet. Um, so what you do is you check for Arms of Honor, which is based on, and again this is one of those that took me forever to find in the rules because it was under the Legion of Honor section, so Arms of Honor um, records this award but Arms of Honor in a manner identical to that for Legion of Honor which means he here it is, awarding the Legion of Honor um, Divides the sum he all his glory earned in the current battle to include include glory earned through the on campaign event card combat card wounds and heroic act divides the sum by four and rounds down so you got eight glory divided by two or divided by four is two so he needs to roll a one or a two a zero or no, it's a, it's a zero one or a two what was it he rolls one d ten if the result is less than or equal to that sum he gets the legion of honor so. I roll a two, so he gets not the Legion of Honor in this case, which isn't available until um, <clears throat> after campaign season six. What you get is this over here, the Arms of Honor, which essentially you just take his Legion of Honor and put it in the first rank inverted. And this just means it kind of gives him a leg up um, on the, the Legion of Honor later on, which it switches over to the Legion of Honor. So... So that happens for him, and then we go to the Battle of Rivoli. The army of Italy thwarts Austria's last attempt to retake northern Italy. There he gets uh, Napoleon's notice plus two, all combat cards in play except held in reserve. So, two Napoleon's notice. Now he will draw. I don't know if I shuffled my combat cards last time. I think I did, but if I didn't, I'll just split the deck. Draw a card. Uh, defend the position, line, inspire the men, or keep head down. He will do a heroic, so I haven't had anybody do discretionary moves at this point. So, uh, wound <clears throat> 12. He's fine. Prisoner 40. Oh, he's prisoner. So, everybody taken prisoner. Points notice plus 1. Actually, that'd be Napoleon's notice plus five. And glory will be plus eight. Is it 47? So it's a 55. And experience four. 
and money plus four. Except he loses all his money because he's taken prisoner. Oh, that was kind of a bit of a disastrous campaign, and that'll be the end of the round. There's only one card left, which nobody can take part in because they're all prisoner. So there you go. You can see just how disastrous um, these campaign seasons can end up. Um, and I do want to double check under becoming a prisoner. I don't remember if they still get the things from the battle card or not. Results and effects. If Grugner performed an act of discretion, he cannot be taken prisoner. Well, I guess I should have done that. Also become a prisoner of assigned to certain commands. Overrun. Subject to being plundered, the captured Grognard becomes absent, returns to normal play through prisoner exchange, cannot receive the Legion of Honor or title. Well, fortunately for him, that happened before the battle, so. Or be promoted for a card that results in his capture. He can be promoted once eligible, if no longer absent as a prisoner. Oh yeah, you can try and escape. Um, and I guess I could have tried to do that for the other guys. The odds are really low, though. You have to roll a 15 or lower on there. Um, so it looks like the stuff that happens to him does end up happening. Um, you know, the, the bonuses that he gets do end up happening. Plundered, uh, whenever he becomes a prisoner, he automatically loses all the money in his purse. It occurs after he receives any money for the card that resulted in his captured. So, sadness <laughs> um, for both those guys. He, the, I don't think he had over a hundred, but but um, Green definitely did. So, very bad news <laughs> for all these guys this campaign round. So, anyway, there you get an idea. Um, it would have been nice if I'd had more combat cards to draw. Um, but since everybody was out of action, that didn't happen. So, But you can see how these work. Uh, same way, divided by line, field, and general. Um, and then you choose whether you're going to do an act of glory or an act of discretion. I haven't done just acts of discretion with any of these guys up to this point. Uh, the reason why you might want to is if you have a high prisoner chance uh, on your act of glory. Um, you may want to avoid being taken prisoner and... Uh, do the, the act of discretion and just do your roll for disgrace there. It's only a 13, so that seems pretty low. Um, so, there you have it. A uh, on-campaign round, and that is pretty much the game. Um, you've got the in-garrison rounds and the campaign event rounds. Uh, you know, the only thing you didn't really see me do according to the sequence of play, because um, I think in my on-garrison round I had pointed out that you, uh, all these things that you go through, doing assignments and so forth, um, you didn't see me roll for assignments, but that's actually, it's a fairly straightforward process, um, depending on what campaign season you're in. Um, each guy, when he's rolling for an assignment, simply rolls the die and whatever uh, 2d10 and then whatever number you get, that's where you place that guy for that particular campaign season. So pretty straightforward. And then the same thing when you assign standing, you just roll the die and uh, use whatever number uh, shows up there on the standing, and that's where you place the, the guy's standing chit. So, um, and then, you know, you didn't see any support or anything like that, um, because uh, nobody has any mistresses or wives yet, so. And no glory yet either, because nobody's earning glory from legions of honor or anything like that. So all that stuff will happen later in the game. Um, but again, all those things are pretty, pretty easy to figure out uh, as you go along, uh, pretty straightforward. Money transfer and tax phase is just where you can move your money around between Paris and Paris, uh, and then the Paris money will get taxed 10%. So um, that is the game. You play until um, either people are dead or uh, you know dying from old age or getting killed in battle or this, that, and the other. 
I guess I can go over winning here. Um, earn one victory point at the end of the game for each of the following categories. So if you get the highest rank, most glory, highest level in Legion of Honor, and most money. Um, four ties. Gargnard at the most... They're each awarded a full victory point for that category. Gargnard at the most victory points is the winner. So... Um, and then I didn't really read about this victory at Mont St. John, but that's sort of after the 100 days thing. So it's also a winner and immortal if he changes the course of history. To do this, he must draw the victory at Mont St. John combat card, even if he dies. If another Grognard qualifies as a winner, according to A, how to win above, both, both Grognards win the game together. Stand side by side in the Pantheon of France alongside the Emperor. So there you go. Everything's kind of put together on, uh, via victory points for winning these certain categories at the end of the game. So... Um, everybody will either be dead or somebody will be ahead in one of those categories. So uh, that is how the game will end. I doubt I will film um, any more of this particular game, uh, but I just wanted to put on video a uh, kind of run through of how to play the game um, since some people may have had the same kind of problems that I did uh, trying to get through the rules and figure out how the game actually plays. Uh, you know, it, it describes well enough all the elements of the game, fitting them together in a coherent process of actually playing the game uh, took some work to, to figure out. So, um, And I made some mistakes throughout my earlier videos too, which I pointed out um, in the uh, various entries for the game on, uh, or various uh, entries for the videos on Board Game Geek. So, um, and then there's been some comments where other people pointed out a couple of things that I was doing wrong or counting wrong, uh, which are also all duly noted on the Board Game Geek entry. So uh, give the game a try. Um, seems like something that would be fun, especially with a, with a group of people. Um, I've got an Empires in Arms group um, that really loves this whole era. And, uh, you know, Empires in Arms full of lots of trash talk and, and uh, table banter. And I think this kind of game would be really good for that um, with guys, you know, challenging each other to duels. And, uh, you know, especially when you get the fair sex in here, somebody trying to, um, you know, steal someone else's mistress or trying to make a mistress out of someone else's wife uh, could result in lots of uh, pistols at dawn scenarios and lots of good, just fun table banter back and forth, um, especially for people that, that find this era of history particularly interesting and fun. So, um, something to think about. I look forward to getting together and trying this with the group.